Hello everyone, Excedra here bringing you episode 8 of Breakout, a mod pack by Akinthea. So, in the last episode, we got enough Ender.io done to get the next pick of choice, which is right here. And today we could be picking another road, but we need to just clean up a little bit and I want to finish Ender.io. So, today... I want to go through these quests and right here. So three of them, well, most all of those can be done super quickly. So let's get rid of all of those. But before we get rid of all of those, let's get started with some uh, more iron alloy because we're going to need more. And now look at this. I have so much resource. This is no, well, not that this is no longer a problem, but it's less of a problem. So let's stop the flow of resources in here. Let's remove all of those, put that in, and we're starting with Iron Alloy. Basically, in the time lapse, I did some setup, but I wanted to start this first. So now that this is started, we can talk a little bit about the time lapse. So in the time lapse, as you can see, I've put a storage chest, a storage crate here, where I can inject whatever I want, and this machine picks it up and pushes it to the next side, like so. Oh, see, Iridium can be cooked, push it here, and then, here I have all of the gravel, don't need that cobblestone. You know what? I'm going to pass that cobblestone again to make it into sand. And here I finally have my auto heavy sieves, which is sieving with a diamond stiffened mesh. That's only sieve efficiency too. You, it doesn't have the uh, sieve fortune. Unfortunately, I don't have a fortune yet. If I do, I'll put it on. But for now, this is what I have. But it's so easy now to sieve gravel that I really don't care about the... the well, I do care, but not enough to uh, wh like switch the mesh from one to the other. The setup is not complete because it's not linked yet. And I kept this old sieve with the efficiency because I want to do this end stone and all of that netherrack getting the best result possible. Oh, that clicking is so annoying. I think it's going to be sound muffler time at some point. This, and this one I kept completely hooked up. So right now, this is a problem because once in a while, I have to go click here, take all of this, push the resource that goes here, and then go to the auto compressor and put all of this. But I also added an extra step. Now that we have a good sag mill with an octatic capacitor, everything goes through here. So it's grabbing from the auto compressor, whatever's ready, and it's pulverizing it. And then it's pushing it to this machine to cook it. So see, now it took some silver, Finish the iron, the iron's gonna exit, it's gonna do the silver. And I think that these two machines are fast enough that it should be able to keep up with the sieving if they were connected. It's just since they're not connected now, I go here, oh, don't take out the mesh. I grab a crap load of stuff, I come here, I push it in here and I end up creating too much resource for the speed of taking care of this. And because, as you can see, there's some cobblestone coming in once in a while, well, the cobblestone, I'm just pushing as stone here and I'm letting it cook. I could try and find a way, like a buffer in between. I just don't have the space yet. And when I do, maybe I'll pull the stone out differently, but not super important for now. This is good enough to continue the production of resource. I also need to get started with something that I know we're going to need. See, phytogenic isolator I'm going to bring right here and I'm going to remove the nether wart from it and I'm going to be doing a bit more cacao, uh, cocoa. If you remember when we first uh, did some uh, ender IO in the last episode, uh, we needed some uh, industrial dyes. Well, in one of the industrial dyes that we're going to need today is uh, requires cocoa and that was my last cocoa so until it's reproduced I don't want to use it so I'm gonna let that reproduce and now we can take a look at the quest so quests uh, and IO these are the one I want to get done come uh, let's do them in a semi kind of order so here all the way to the bank these capacitor banks are nice for storing energy but they really shine when I put multiples together. It becomes easy to see how much power I have and the rate I am gaining or losing. So it wants us to create a basic capacitor bank. So let's say capacitor. A basic capacitor bank is made from iron or iron alloy and from basic capacitor. 
So we need four basic capacitors. One, two, three, four. That should be good. Let's craft four right now. Perfect. And I need a block of redstone right here. And I'm going to use my <laughs> my three stacks of iron alloy. And oh, I don't want this to push. Let's remove the push. Let's bring it back and put it back in that slot. And let's reopen this to cooking stuff because I want to get through this backlog. Perfect. Coming back here, we can now craft the basic capacitor like so, which completes a quest and gives us a vibrant capacitor as a reward. I'm not gonna put them down just yet. That's gonna be part of a uh, next cleanup, but I'm gonna put them side by side. Fortunately, they don't become a single block because they're different. This one is a basic, this one's a vibrant. Vibrant can hold 25, thousand ui no that's a man max input output but it can store 25 million and this one is a thousand in out and it can hold a million and also if i do this it can be so i can use two basic to upgrade into a capacitor bank then i can use two capacitor bank to upgrade to a vibrant okay so if you look at it a vibrant is four vibrant alloy plus two octatic capacitor, which are two vibrant alloy each. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus another one for the vibrant crystal, plus all of this. Or if I come here, what's another way of crafting it? I can craft one directly with this recipe. I think that this recipe is less expensive because four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I maybe they're kind of equalish. I think this one is less expensive, but anyway, I'm probably going to upgrade this one just to get rid of it. But not in this episode because we're trying to crush through as many quests as possible for Andrea. So next we have Charmed and Enchanted. As long as you can collect enough experience to use it, the Andrea Enchanter takes the guesswork out of enchanting items. Look up the recipes, supply the raw ingredient, and you can get the exact enchanted book you want. So it wants us to craft an enchanter. So let's search for enchanter. Enchanter like so. We need a book. So let's go and grab some sugar canes. Well, dried up sugar canes. Let's grab a leather and let's make that book like so. And book like so, perfect. And let's craft an enchanter. And voila! And we're going to put it down right here and grab the quest, which gives us 32 level of experience at a point where we were starting to need it. Now, if you look at the recipe, auto smell XP boost 3. So you know how right now I have XP boost 1 on my weapon? Well, with 32 gold and 9 lapis lazuli and a books and quill, I can make an XP boost 3, which I'm going to be making, just not right now. If I look through this quickly, is there something else that I want? Uh, probably sharpness five would be great and it's expensive in nether quartz though, but uh, that would be interesting. Uh, looting, I want a better looting on my sword. So looting three will be done for sure on my sword. Then we have efficiency, which I don't care here. Fortune. Uh, I'm not sure if Fortune's the one that I want. I never remember. I think Fortune is for breaking block and looting and uh, what's the other one? Looting is for when you kill mobs. Flame, Infinity, Luck of the Sea, Lure, Sweeping Edge, Soulbound, Withering, Insight, Holding. Holding, oh, there's an even higher level. Woohoo! I could make my bag just one more bigger or I can make more bag now. Decay, Repellent, Leech, Multi-Shot, Smelting, <gasps> Vorpal 3. You want to get more, more, more head? Vorpal 3 sounds good. Uh, and that's it. So unfortunately, Sieve Efficiency is not one of them. Oh, that is so... What? Oh, no, okay. Is that crafting? No. No. That's to remove experience from it, I guess. <gasps> There's even a sieve efficiency five. Oh no, F forget sieve efficiency. I mean sieve luck, sieve fortune three. Yeah, it's not a craftable book, unfortunately. <sighs> the dream. I was hoping that I could make one of those, but unfortunately I can't. 
but it's another quest. Now the other three quests I'm going to read and do together because there's a process here. Bob Ross, the painting machine is one of the most beloved block in Ender.io. Using this block, you can paint many blocks to look like other blocks for more aesthetically please effect. One of the most popular blocks to paint is the conduit cover. Made out of the same material as conduit, it can be painted to match your wall and then placed on top of conduits to completely hide them. Holding a Yetta wrench in one hand will let you see and work right through the facade. You can also paint glowstone to create hidden light resource. So one thing that's really nice about this is, as it said, you can inject glowstone into a block, which would make it glow. So instead of having glowstone block here, I could inject glowstone in the stone slab directly, which is going to be a bit nicer. I don't know how much time I'm going to waste on that though. But this wants us to make a painting machine in a conduit facade. So let's say that. Painting, perfect. Machine, perfect. So painting machine is going to require some gear and an industrial machine chassis and three electrical steel. What's my electrical steel status? Hmm, seven. I'm not sure that's going to be enough. You know what? Let's not take chance. Let's just make a little bit more. So 12 of this, where's my silicon? Come on. I hate when I can't find things. Oh, right here. So 12 iron, 12 silicon, and 12 pulverized coal. Like so. Let's come back to this machine that we're going to close off again. Then take all of this, and then we're going to put it in an order that doesn't screw up anything, like so. And you know what? I'm done. I just, just that noise is really, really annoying. Time for sound muffler. In very close quarters, roommate can be very annoying, especially when those roommate are zombies. They snore. A sound muffler will let you configure what sound you do and don't want to hear. You can also convert it to a bubble version. Though your ability to move around is so limited, it might not be useful at this time. So super sound muffler. What's the recipe for that? Super, oh, I have the French keyboard. Perfect, super sound muffler right here. It is crafted with a node block, which is super easy. Oh, I should have made that so long ago. So that's one quest done, which is going to give us useless stuff. But then I can come here and I'm going to put it like as far like here and ah, sweet, sweet silence. The only problem is that when it stops working, I won't know. So I'll have to come check once in a while. It also has the problem that, uh, see, it's not making noise. So unfortunately, can I edit the range on that? Because I would like the range to be much smaller. Oh, yes, I can. Three? Still not hearing the clicking sound, but yes. Oh, that's perfect. So yes, I'm so happy we got this done. It's going to make things so much cleaner sound wise. Let's push that back in and let's see my electrical steel is done and I can reset it to start inputting again. Perfect. Let's continue. So we did a little detour, but that was really needed. Mixology. Crafting tables are all well and good, but sometimes you get much more explosive reaction by mixing two fluids together with a catalyst or two to really get things going. Vats can do this. Many fluid will require multiple stages to get the most powerful results. So fortunately, these blocks, like most of Ender.io, can be set to automatically push into the tank or vat next to them, allowing for a smooth progression through the stages. Many of the results make great fuels. So it wants us to make a vat and a hooch. So we're going to come here and we're going to add that. And we're going to go and read the last quest. The last quest right here, combusting out, combusting out. While a simple sterling might get us started, if I don't already have a reliable source of power, I'm going to have to try a little harder. A combustion generator lets me combine fuel and coolant from a vari variety of source to create a much stronger stream of power. So it wants a combustion vat 
Ah, uh, that contains a lot of uh, problem solved. The, that. Hello. And combustion engine. Oh, just combustion maybe? Yeah, so combustion generator. Is it what it's called? Yes. So that's why when I wrote engine, it was screwing things up. So we need to craft this, which means we need an industrial machine and sub tank. We need to craft this, another industrial machine chassis, and a third one. So we need three industrial machine chassis. Let's come right here, and that's also why I needed iron alloy ingot. Three of those with three, uh, easier to do this way, with three industrial dye blend, like so. We're going to close it again. You know what? This is getting annoying. I'll restart the cooking at the end of the episode because obviously, ah, oh, that's all there's left. Anyway, let's just do these three. And while these three are happening, I need one, two, three, four tanks. So let's craft four fluid tanks. I need more iron bar. And that's going to be exactly enough for four. So let's craft four of those. And I need a piston right here. And what else do I need? I need some dark bimetal gear. So I need two of these. Does this also? Yes. So I need two more. Then I, two more I said. And then I need some uh, dark steel nuggets to make two. Let's go back here. So I need to make two of these, one, two. What else do I need? I need nether quartz and diamond. I'm out of diamond, but not really because I can just go like this two stacks so if I grab two stacks I need 16 of these Ugh, one too many just do the diamonds will oh and I needed more diamonds so good thing I did that right now perfect so I'm good I'm gonna need two nether quartz and I'm going to need a cauldron and I'm going to need a furnace like so perfect let's grab the two nether quartz and get rid of this and grab my three oh wow <laughs> lots of materials we're finally past the hump now things are going to start getting easy that then combustion generator then painting machine perfect if you oh i made too many dark bimetal gears oh well too bad we're going to use it somewhere else at another moment if you remember for one of the quests we also needed conduit facade yeah, like so, let's craft just one. I don't really have the intention of going through this right now and using it maybe later if I make my base more beautiful, but I don't care for now. So claim the combustion generator and hit back. Claim Bob Ross and hit back. And for mixology, we're just missing the next step. So let's put the vat down here. I'm gonna need another power cable. Where hard are the, oh, in my bag probably. Yes, in my bag. So let's grab that, put it right here, like a soul. And okay, one thing I wanted to resolve. One of the quests gave us, I think, oh, that's the quest reward for this. Okay, so let's do it the dumb way first. This should be filled. Let's fill it. 12, 16, 20. Let's grab that, bring it here, and I'm going to put it in push. And water is in. I'm gonna need the octatic capacitor. And now if I look at the recipes, I want the recipe for hooch. And I'm going through like this so that you can see that there's multiple others. So hooch right here. So for hooch, potatoes give us four, apple 3.5, flour three, three, two, 1.6, 1.6, 1.4. So poison potatoes the best, but I don't have any of those. I do have potato, which makes a bucket if used with sugar. Are there better reagent out there? No. So I want to make 20 to fill a portable tank. So I'm going to need 20 potatoes, 20 potatoes, like so, and 20 dried up sugar cane, which I'm going to transform into sugar, like so. And then I can put those in and we're going to let the hooch happen. And while we wait for it to happen, I'm going to grab a bucket to grab the first bucket that it's going to make. That process takes a, I was going to say a little bit of time, but literally just a little bit of time. 
that's another quest completed. So we can claim two ender tank, which means at this point, I want to go sideways and do another quest. So in getting together, ender storage. Ender storage, a more advanced version of the classic. These ender chests and ender tanks share inventory with any other version set on the same code. Set by using dies on the pads on top. A diamond can be used to lock them to a single player. Don't leave your ender storage set to white, white, white unless you love freeloader. Also, if you love having your machine confused. Once I craft an ender tank and an ender chest, I already have two ender tank, but I want both of those, so I'm just going to craft more. Uh, I'm going to need how many? I'm going to be making, I need four, eight, 12 blaze rod. I hate when it's not in my hand, so I can't see what I'm getting. Perfect. So I'm going to come here. And I'm going to change this search for ender chest. And ender chest is like this. I'm going to make as many blaze rod, the 12 blaze rod that I can't. I'm going to make, oh, I need some ender pearl. And you know what? I'm tired of the back and forth. So I'm going to put 16 ender pearl in my crafting chest right now, like so. And then I can go and say, make one ender chest. Let's be careful. And ender tank, I want two because. Uh, I already have two, but I want two more to be able to have two sets of liquid. And like so, that's one. Ah, of course, if I make only one cauldron, it's not going to help. So now I can make a second one like so. Perfect. So now, you know what? Give me a second. I'm going to do one more because we are the one more people. One, two, three, four. Let's come back here and like this like this and that's four more i need another cauldron like so and that's going to be another one perfect now i'm going to come here and i want to look at what dyes do i have since i don't have a lot of dye i'm not going to use a crazy amount of it but uh do i not have any red flower oh that's annoying okay so let's come back here Show the dandelion in here, which have multiplied, which is exactly what I wanted. And how is this going? Ah, this is full. I'm going to have to come back to this because I'm going to have to empty it a little bit. Let's just take a second and let's go see if we can get lucky with some red flowers. Oh, yep, we can get lucky with red flowers. And another one. Nope. Wow, so we got lucky in the beginning, but less toward the end. Perfect. And let's do the last one just for luck, which was not for luck. Perfect. Oh, I can all I always forget to use this. I'm too used to using the other way around. Anyway, let's come back here. Let's put some of those. Oh, red tulip. Yes, that's red. Poppy, that's red again. What is Axe Ice Daisy? Light gray. What's azure blue? Same thing. Okay, none of this matter. Let's grab all of this and this. And first of all, I want to make some orange dye. So this and this is going to give me a lot of orange dye. I'm going to get rid of these things right here and orange dye. Perfect. So now I can go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is going to be my lava tank. So lava tank is orange because lava is orange. I can remove this, put it there, and unfortunately, those cannot be moved like this. They need to be broken, and I don't know of any quick way. If you guys have any quick ways of getting rid of those, like of popping them easily, I would really love to know, but that's the only way I know to move Ender Tank. So let's put this one here. See this fills? And now we have lava here. It's not very useful for now, but it lets us disconnect our lava production from our power or whatnot. Now these, I made three because I'm going to grab nine lapis lazuli and I'm going to make these blue because blue equal water. So let's go like so. And so. Oh, and now let's break all three of those and we're going to put them in the right place. Let's go. Oh, this is so slow. Perfect. So I'll put one on top here, which is going to give me water. Then I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to put one on top here and one on top here. I could put a conduit in between the two. Doesn't really matter right now. I just want it to be fast. Perfect. Push in. 
change to push in and we've got water and we've got more hooch that I'm going to output to the side and that's why I wanted to do this I'm going to end up having 20 bucket of hooch right here and I'm going to craft the whole 20 bucket because I think I'm going to need some later let's remove this machine this machine I don't need ender chest for now I don't need the combustion generator you know what I'm going to put the hooch bucket in here and the bucket in here and now it brings me to the last quest of ender io oh I, I can clean this <gasps> oh yeah perfect so it gives me a third tank for lava that I'm going to put right here and a second chest so the second chest can be very useful uh, do I have orange yes the second chest can be very useful because the chest could be used to see how this is not connected there well I could push it into an ender chest and reconnect it there I don't know if I'm going to rearrange I don't know if I'm going to need that for now but that's a possibility that I, I can do and I can put that here perfect so let's look at the last quest of ender io in ender io the last quest is mobs and that's we kept it for last because that's the hardest one when you really want to kill 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 there are always ways the ender io powered spawner is expensive to build and it will require the creation of several other machines but once made you can combine it with a broken spawner of the appropriate type on a vanilla anvil and spawn all the mob you want you may want to consider a killer joe to accompany it so it's going to give us four broken spawner which means we're going to be able to create four different creature spawn right now i'm thinking zombie skeleton enderman i don't know what for the fourth one but we're never going to get another broken spawner so we'll have to make sure what we want the fourth one to be before we do anything else it's going to give us six soul vial which is just akentia's way of making things a bit easier and one soul binder so soul needs soul ingots i know this by heart so i'm going to grab a stack of sand right here go upstairs make sure that we're making more soul and i'm going to grab 16 soul sand 16 and i'm going to grab 16 gold because like i said i know the recipe by heart maybe i should have shown you i'll show it to you later if you want but for now let's just soul sand and gold will give us soul ingot so let's look at powered spawner so we want to craft a powered spot why am i uppercase spawn spawner so a power spawner a powered spawner is made with a head any kind of head for electrical steel oh good thing i made more some vibrant crystal which are easily just vibrant alloy around a, uh, an emerald and a z logic controller which is made in a slice and slice so already we know we need a second machine we need a slice and spot uh, slice and slice and we need solarium silicon and a zombie head so this one very specifically needs a zombie head and the solarium you craft with like i said soul sand and gold ingot the slice and splice need four more solarium ingot any head these energized by metal gear that are made with energetic alloy so not complicated and both machine requires a soul machine chassis a soul machine chassis is made the same way with a simple machine chassis and some soul attuned dye blend soul attuned dye blend is made from four quarts a black organic dye two brown organic dye and two soul powder soul powder very easy let me grab that come back here soul powder is two of these ingot crushed voila then we need four nether quartz crush one two three four i don't need more than one craft of this because i don't think i'll ever need more than six of those so let's grab these nether quartz dust perfect now we need the black dye if you guys remember the black dye was one slime ball to six charcoal perfect one slime ball to six charcoal and the only one we don't really know yet because we've never made it is the brown one and the brown one is 12 twigs and a rice slime ball or two cocoa beans with a with a slime and two pulverized charcoal or coal so one two that's why we restarted this machine one two and two coal or charcoal let's grab two coal right here and this plus this plus this 
perfect. I don't know why I have an extra slime ball. I must have been not careful when I clicked. But this lets us come here and craft, well, not, well, yes, craft the industrial soul attuned dye blend, sorry. And then we need these, um, the simple machine chassis. Let's just do two sets of this. And I have six soul blend. So I'm going to transform all six of them right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not more than that because there's no point for now. And I want to keep my iron alloy in case I need it. And that's going to give me my, well, I only need three, but here's the six and I can come back here. Let's get rid of some material and time for crafting. So we need a slice and slice, which needs these. Uh, slice and slice like so i need those one two i don't think i need more let's not overcraft for now we have all the material so this should be easy. no now the head so in the last episode we got super lucky we've got our zombie head for our z logic controller we've got a random head for one of the machine and the quest gave us a head for another one of the machine so we have to be very careful, like here. I'm going to make sure to switch it to use my uh, creeper head. Nope, that's exactly what you have to be super careful not to happen. Slice and splice. And you know what? We're going to get started immediately. I'm gonna need two silicon, two solarium ingot, uh, one redstone and one, and one what? Now I'm confused. And so two, two, one, one. Oh, I'm good. And the head. And here I'm going to need my axe. I know I have an axe somewhere. And shears. Why can I never see things when I'm looking for it? Uh, oh, I also have a skeleton skull. You know what? I prefer using the skeleton skull over the enderman. That's more rare. I want to keep this. Axe and did I not make? Yes, and var shears. So now I can come here and put down the slice and splice, like so. Oh, I need to put a capacitor in it. Do I have a reasonable level? Yeah, double layer. Octatic would be faster, but that's good enough for now. Put it in, put the tools in, and everything else fits nicely. Ugh, that sound is not pleasant. And do you see the blood, like it's crunching the head? This mod is nice, hot. Uh, amazing and disturbing all at the same time. Need some vibrant crystal, so two of those to make two vibrant crystal. And now we should be able to make what the skeletons call the powered spawner and get rid of these nuggets. So we now have the last quest of Enderio completed. And guys, branch number two, road number two is completely completed which means that in the next episode, we're going to be opening Actually Edition. That being said, there's still work to do. And in the time-lapse, I'm going to be, so I'm gonna go in a time-lapse and in my time-lapse, I'm going to craft another magmatic dynamo that I'm gonna bring downstairs in the big room downstairs with one of these magic ender tank to feed the magmatic dynamo that's going to push power in that vibrant capacitor, which is then going to power a powered spawner so i'm going to do it in the time slot uh time lapse so i'm going to explain it here if i take the soul binder and i put it here the soul binder wants a broken spawner like so and a bottle with the with the mob that we want let me just i don't need this for now so let's grab this one back and put it here we'll just quickly go downstairs and see if we have a mob do we have a mob anywhere in there? Nope, nope, uh, no, and no. Do I have it on me? Yes, I have some infinity dust. Look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to come right here and I'm going to put an infinity dust in here, in the middle to help spawn as much as possible. Another one here and then I need to put stairs on both sides this is going to be so much easier. Another one in here and the fourth one in here. So what these infinity dust do is that they help mob spawn. Uh, so hopefully we should get some spawns while we're waiting for some spawns. I'm gonna come upstairs. What, 
Oh, I can hear a mob. Okay, so let's go right here. Let's see if these got a mob. Sometimes when I go downstairs and I come back up, a mob has appeared in one of these. Nope. Let's go look in the other one right now. And nope. So the sounds are probably coming from downstairs. And I'm even hearing one of those little annoying... Uh, I don't remember the name. See, there's one right here. What's the name of these things? Endermites. Perfect. So that's dead. Uh, what's in here? Nothing. Oh, I think I have a good mob right here. If it's an Enderman, I want it. Enderman. Perfect. So we have one already. And... Whoa. Something exploded somewhere. I don't... Oh. These are a bit harder to kill. So I don't know what the explosion was. Ooh. You're coming out, I guess? These are smaller, so they can break out of the mob farms, but any other mob cannot. Is there anything else here? Nope. Oh, wow. Okay, uh, that's a bit dangerous. Let's just get rid of these. And this. Perfect. And what do we have spawned in here? Oh. I hear another Enderman. Nothing in here. I hear a skeleton somewhere. Where's the skeleton? Not here and... Aw, oh, darn it. I don't know if you guys heard, but one of the Endermen uh, teleported. Which now means it could be outside of our bubble where we cannot get to it. And there's no skeleton, so I don't know where I heard the skeleton from. Let's go back upstairs, maybe from one of these rooms. So let's go check right here. Nothing. Nothing. I do hear... Oh, I think we're going to be hearing an Enderman forever now. Ah, perfect. I want a skeleton. So yes, please. I don't care about the creepers. So the creepers I'm just going to kill. What I really wanted though is a zombie. Because I'm going to need to kill some zombie. So in my time lapse, I'm going to be putting down more of these infinite dust. And I'm going to try and capture a zombie because then, oh, at least I can do one. So if I show you and I take the skeleton, you need to use XP from the player. And this is going to craft. It's a very slow process. Then you come here, you put the powered spawner and the spawner that you want. This doesn't work. But if this one was the zombie one or the skeleton one, it would craft into a powered spawner of type whatever skeleton or wither or chicken or whatever you put in it okay so i'm also going to be crafting three more powered spawner because i have three more broken spawner and i'm going to try and get my zombie because one of the next quests that we want to do if i come back here is um crossroad mob mechanics we need eight bones and eight rotten flesh the basic rules of minecraft means that mob can't spawn too close to you but now that we are opening up some real distance, it is possible we might get some unwanted visitors. Make sure you keep things lit up, but built into the back of each of the side room is a small mob spawning room. If you knock down the torches, you may get some easily killable company. I'm going to spawn those mobs, because in, in another playthrough where I wasn't using the mob spawner, it, it's one of the last quests that I was able to complete, and there's even a second level to it. So it's like, nope, nope, not going to wait for that. I'm just going to work so that it happens faster. And you know what? I can restart this now that we're in chatty mode. And this is almost done. So do we have time to complete one last quest while we wait for this to happen? Um, let's get rid of the chest and the bin. Perfect. So one quest is... Well, I should read that. Trashy. Despite the overwhelming desire to just... Hoard everything in case you need it later. Sometimes things just have to go. A simple garbage can, one for items and one for liquids, takes care of the problem. So it wants us to make those two bins. Very easy. This quest I could have done a long time ago, but I've never used them. I'm a hoarder. I'm not ashamed of it. Well, in Minecraft I'm a hoarder, not in real life. So I never throw away anything because you might need it. And this mod pack doesn't have like the production of useless stuff. So it's not as important. By the way, this is finished. So let's grab it. 
I can already start the one with the Enderman. Uh, yes, I have enough experience. Okay, then I can come here and show you. Power spawner, broken spawner, boom. We now have a power spawner for skeleton. It just needs power and a redstone and there's a range to it. So I'm gonna have to be careful. So I'm gonna have to make a room downstairs for it because look, this is how far it can spawn stuff. So it's one, two, three, four in each direction and I can't reduce, no, I can't reduce it. Uh, I'm gonna put it in active with signal and I'm gonna make sure that I put a lever on it. And also you can spawn or you can directly capture. So if there's any recipe that needs a mob in a soul vial, you just put it here and it's going to capture it. I also need some capacitors and whatnot. So I just wanted to show you what it was going to do because I'm gonna do it in my time lapse. So let's claim that. And next one is iron chest. Oh, back. Iron chest right here. Iron chest, wood to iron chest upgrade. By coating my chest in sturdier materials, they not only increase their storage capacity, but can also be placed closer together. There seems to be a lot of possible variations and upgrading is easy. So let's craft an iron chest. Iron chest, I should probably have put the uh, sound muzzler over that machine. And we need a wood to iron chest upgrade, like so, which completes the quest. Hello, and gives us a copper chest. And the beauty, look at this, okay? So first of all here, I only have four spots left don't stand on the teleport and if I apply to it I now have three more lines and if I put a second one next to it see they don't connect so basically it makes it easier to uh, to have multiple chests in a smaller space but I have the crate once you have the crate I don't understand why you would use the chest I much prefer the crates anyway that's another quest done which doesn't leave a lot of quest it needs the leaves the unsupervised as my workshop gets busier, sometimes I get tired of managing all the minutia. This nifty little gadget will keep my machines working unsupervised after I shut down for the day, but only for a few hours, more than they would seem to invite trouble. Chunk load for 4 hours after disconnection. Unfortunately, only applies to server, not single player. So making the weirding gadget is not going to help me, but it's a quest, so I'm going to craft it. I'm just going to craft it later because that's a lot of gold. But if I was on a server, I would totally do that to be able to continue getting resources, which now I get in my time lapse. One of the next one to do is power play. If you aren't careful when you can upgrade your power system unevenly and start to produce more power than you can quickly move. Pay attention to the throughput limit on different power conduit, ducts, sorry, and conduits to be sure you don't have a bottleneck. In tight places, signalum plated item duct can transmit both item and power using a single phase. So it wants us to make redstone energy flux duct. And if you remember the redstone energy flux duct, that was a problem because they need to be filled with the st stabilized redstone. So let's craft one bunch like this. And now I need my magma crucible. Let's grab that. Ah, I need an MTN. So I need my magma crucible that I'm going to put back right here for now. And I need my fluid transposer that I'm going to bring right here. I'm going to make sure to disconnect both of those. And I have six, so I need 12 redstone. Uh, 12, perfect. So I'm gonna put 12 redstone in the magma crucible, which is going to exit to the right. This one is going to receive and put those so as I get the redstone voila quest done I'm gonna let the other one fill but that's the quest for this I also need signalum plated signalum plated Wh which one did they want us to make signalum plated item duct signalum plated item duct and again there's multiple I don't want the vacuum I don't want the dense I just want this one and this one can be made with three item impulse ducts. So I'm going to craft a... I need to make the opaque first. Uh, is this like just going around in circle for no reason? Impulse item duck. Okay, sorry. Signalum plated... Which one does it want? Signalum plated item duck. 
Signalum pleated, not impulse, not impulse. Not impulse. Holy cow. Okay, this one. Signalum pleated item duck. I need some item duck like so. So let's craft six and let's craft not vacuum. Too many recipe of those. Like this and voila. So basically, if I put this right here, this would carry items and power. Again, like I said, not going to use those. Now that I've unlocked the Ender IO stuff, the Ender IO is much better. Although this one is 9000 RF. So maybe just not now. I don't see the need now. Now, if I clean this and come back, uh, there's also these two quests that I can do easily. This one I can't do now. It's going to be resource intensive. This one, uh, like I said, I don't want to do until I get more gold. I do have six stack of gold though. You know what? Let's get it done. Yes, I know, but I have enough that I'm not so scared anymore. So I need four block. One, two, three, four. I need an eye of ender. So like so, eye of ender. We're getting a lot of things done today. I'm really happy with this episode. Perfect. And we're going to chuck it because we're never going to need it. And claim some experience, and experience is always good. We need more experience, which is why I'm going to make an XP boost, because all of these, see, this one's ready. Let's come back here. And if I want to put that, oh, I don't have another powered spawner, but that's 16 level. Oh, I can barely do it. Uh, that's all going to happen in my time lapse. So now, can I make a translocator? What are translocator? Oh, that should be also easy, translocator. Item translocator, like so, perfect. They both need a piston, so two piston. And then make an, one item, one set of item translocator. I need a lapis. You know what? It's not the first time that I need lapis. I'm just gonna put lapis in this crate for the future, like this, and craft this. So these, they're amazing to move things around. They go super fast, but they're a bit annoying sometimes. You put them like this, and where you want it to input, you click like this. So do you see how fast this is going? This is emptying this chest super fast and bringing it here, and oh boy, stop the machine. I don't want, uh, stop the machine. So I wanted to show you something, and by showing something, I just caused another problem, and you can reverse it. Click like this, click like this, reversed, we're good. And this one's the same, but with liquid, and the quest lets you choose another one. I'm going to grab another item translocator, but again, I'm not sure I intend to use those right now. Unless I see a need, I'll keep it in mind, but I don't see a need. Uh, like I said, growth year is concentrating my growth crystals and adding some potion and emeralds give me a block that not only speed growth, but also hydrates my farm. This is really good, but expensive. We're not gonna do it in this episode. And then there's this one here, Apple of Knowledge. If you feel like you're starting to get the ing of all these mods, try a real challenge and craft yourself this tasty treat. Not only does it show off your encyclopedic knowledge, it will also give you a big burst of XP. Although less spectacular, the other apples from this mod can also have some fun and useful effect. Well, mostly useful. So this is also something that's going to take a while. And finally, keeping a record. While this experience has been rather hellish, I've learned quite a bit. I should write it down in a book in order to retain some of these skills for the future. Source XP for future use can't be lost to death or misadventure. So, tom, Tome of Knowledge, that one I'm going to craft, and that's going to be the last, 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 last thing of this episode. So, I need another book. I have everything else, so I need one, two, three, and another leather, so I'm good on this, like so. Paper with this, makes a book, and makes a, oh, I need two emerald nuggets. I thought I had some. I always kind of keep some left over here, usually. And voila! which gives us 10 level. And now if I use the book and I right click, it pushes one level by right click. If I shift right click, it gives them back. So let's say that I want to fight some mob. Let's do this. This way I can't lose any experience. Also, just to show you, if you put the book in here, you can push your essence of knowledge in here, or if I switch it over, you can push experience in here. So this is also an easy way of getting 
uh, experience directly from the player in the future. Uh, so that's it. If I come here later, later. So these are two quests that we're probably going to do while we're waiting for Botania or for the end game. But as you can see, we're pretty much done. Also, uh, we're going to have to start looking into applied energistics soon. Probably not next episode, but you remember when we're going to be doing actually addition? In the second episode where we're going to complete the quest, we're going to start doing some of these. So in my time lapse, I'm also going to empty the room like I promised I would. But that's it. So we have the plan for the time lapse and in the next episode, actually addition. So guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.